Sundown Salt Series Amplifiers, which stands for Sundown Audio Low Voltage Technology. We've tested a few of these already. Today we're going to look at the Sundown Audio Salt 4, which currently is priced at $1,353. Prices are subject to change based on when you watch this video, sales that may be going on, price increases, all that fun stuff. All the Salt Series amplifiers I've tested thus far come with the same accessory, so I'm just going to show you unboxing here of the Salt 2. All the accessories you see here also come with the Salt 4, and actually the exterior is identical except for the dimensions. The Salt 4 is a little bit longer, but let's take a look at what you get. You get this cable here, you get some extra inserts if you want to use uh, the hex screws instead of the regular type screws. We do have the base cable here, which is pretty long, has the Cat5 style connection, and the base remote. We really like this base remote. It's got voltage, got temperature. Comes with a little screwdriver as well. Allows you to fine tune the voltage. Now we'll talk specs for the Salt 4. One ohm stable, it does have 24 dB per octave low pass filter and subsonic filter and a variable base boost as well. Power ratings, 1,000 watts at 4 ohms, 2,000 at 2 ohms, 4,000 at 1 ohm, or 8,000 with two of these linked up. On one side of the amp, you can see Tiffany-style RCA in and outs, power protecting clip LEDs, the status control, which is a four-pin. I'll show you that here in a minute, a little bit more about it. You have gain, subsonic, and bass boost. Those are all metal potentiometers, very high quality. The remote base terminal there for your base cable, low-pass filter, phase, output master or slave, and also the linkable uh, outputs there for bridging the amps together. You have 1.0 inputs. The Salt 4 just has one 1.0 input, which I really wish it had two, and it has dual speaker outputs, although this is a monoblock for around eight gauge wire. On the amp, this four pin connection for status, what this is, it gives you the ability using the wire included with the little plug on it, is to do remote status connection for power or protect. So if you want to extend some LEDs, you can do that. These nuts. <laughs> Dimensions of the Salt 4, 22 inches long by 8.75 inches wide. The millimeter equivalents are there as well. And as far as the height goes, all these salt amps are the same, 2.75 inches or 70 millimeters. Let's get this amp all plugged up. And before we fire it up, we're going to talk about some of the settings here. People ask all the time about the amp dyno. The default settings we use are the gain is matched to the head unit with 7 dB of overlap. The subsonic is always set to minimum. The low pass filter is set to maximum or the highest setting. The bass boost is set to minimum. Phase is set to zero. And of course, in this instance, we're using one amp. So we have the master slave set to master. Now let's fire up the good old SMD, Demore Engineering Amplifier Dyno, to do our RMS power output testing of this amplifier. Before we do that, make sure you check the video description for links to Wilson Audio merch, smash me a thumbs up, and subscribe if you like this content. More like it coming all the time. Now let's talk about the Dyno test. There's three different tests, certified, uncertified, and dynamic. Certified test takes us up to 1% THD. Uncertified takes us up to the clipping point, And dynamic is a dynamic tone mimicking IHF 202 standard. As usual, first up, 4 ohms. Amp is rated 1,000 watts at 14.4. Got the lithium bank going here. Let's see what we get. Certified, 4 ohms, 40 hertz, 1,806 watts. Voltage is at 15.11. Again, this is a low voltage amp, but that just means it's not an 18 volt amp. So uh, anything around 15 and a half or less is good. And if you're running a high powered amp like this, you need to have strong electrical. Uncertified 2333 over double the rated power, quite a bit well above double the rated power. Crazy. Now let's try the dynamic test. This sends a pulse tone of 40 Hertz into the amp. Let's find out what we get. Look at this. We're right at 15 volts due to the lithium, but 2,273 watts dynamic. So it does have good dynamic range built in. And the efficiency is certified 90%. So that's pretty good. Now let's try the two ohm test. The amp is rated 2,000 watts at 14.4 volts. Certified test first up to 1% THD. 
3,600 watts at 14.94. I would say it easily does well above 2,000 at 14.4 volts. Uncertified up to clipping, there we go. 3,983 almost doubles the rated power at strong voltage 14.82. Now what about a dynamic test? I can't even talk because I'm blown away by the 4,000 watts, 4,042 at 14.89. And efficiency, 90%. Staying up there, really good. This is a big expensive Korean amp, but you uh, get what you pay for with efficiency. One ohm, amp is rated 4,000 watts. Let's try certified test. You'll notice my voltage gets closer to 14.4 here, but we still got 5,400 and 70 watts so these amps are underrated again you're paying a little more getting the extra power getting the korean build quality so uh, those of you who want that this is the amp that you're looking for uncertified 6106 watts at 14.35 and let's try dynamic look at this <laughs> 7150 at 15.03 crazy power efficiency not bad 79 percent. anything close to 80 percent at one ohm i consider really good results we just have to say rated plus and you can see all the tests here you can pause it if you want to see the 8 ohm test which we've got 918 certified and yes there is a 0.8 ohm test if you wait to the very end of the video you can see that if you hang around now let's flip this amp over, take some screws out and see what's inside. Korean half bridge goodness. Actually have the SALT 3 and the SALT 4 here together. I'm going to pull off both bottoms at the same time. You'll see the SALT 4 has a fan in the middle. So the SALT 3 did not have a fan before. And we're going to talk about some of the different components as well. This one has the 35 volt 4700 microfarad filtering caps, the 200 volt 1000 microfarad for the rails. The good stuff. It is a big heat sink, keeps the amp nice and cool. The amp barely got warm. The fan never came on for me. It did rated power way plus more. Tiffany style RCAs, which are very nice. These amps are linkable, so you can hook up multiples. 24 dB per octave crossovers, and of course the remote base with the voltage and temperature is nice. Could be better, the amp is big, so just be prepared. Single 1.0 inputs, I'd really like to see dual inputs with an amp this powerful. The plastic base knob, yeah, I know. Nitpicky, but the amp is so expensive, I would expect a metal one. The black lettering is sometimes hard to see on the end of the amp. Korean equals big dollars, and I did not try this amp half an ohm dynamic due to problems with previous salt amps at half an ohm. Here is the base knob. Very nice looking. The amp overall did really well on the dyno. The do it bump dose segment is not going to be here because we know this amp bumps. I do appreciate you guys watching. Again, make sure you check the video description for links to other salt amplifiers, other amps that I've tested, and make sure you stick around to the end to see the different tests. Big D, till next time. I'm out of here. As usual, the out of here is just a temporary thing because you know, guys, I'm always around. Got extras for the OGs. Let's try 0.8 certified, 6,110 watts at 14.28. So yeah, this amp has got the power as long as you have the juice to feed it. Uncertified, look at this, 6,759 watts at 14.14. And then lastly, let's throw that dynamic burst over 8,000, look at this, over 8,500 watts, 8,534, 14.89. Here's the final test sheet. You pause this if you want to see it all. Thanks again for watching. Make sure you check my other videos coming up here. Big D, I'm out. <laughs>